Hi everyone. So today I'm going to be talking about how I got into medical school. I've had a few questions from people asking how. My qualifications, well, they're, they're, you know, they're not amazing, which is one of the reasons actually, I'm, well, I suppose in general, I was so, so incredibly happy that I actually got in. For my GCSEs, they're, they're unremarkable really. I think I got one A star in English. Uh, bearing in mind I took them a long time ago and I'm 25 years old and the rest were A's and B's but they weren't straight A's you know I didn't get all A's I think I also got C in Spanish in GCSE so I think the point I'm making is I, I don't think GCSEs really matter that much yeah, so you can get in with not all A's in GCSEs you've heard it here first in terms of my A levels, again, unremarkable. I got A, B, B. It must have been I got them in 2006, I think, I guess. 2006. They were in A in English, B in Psychology, B in Philosophy. And then I also took a part time A level in Chemistry. I got a B in that because I was doing it while I was working. It was really, really hard. But actually, while I was doing it, I found out that I didn't actually need um, any chem. Like, I didn't need any A levels for the particular courses that I was applying for. It was all based on the GAMSAT, so I didn't really have to work very hard for it. And it was just, it was more to help me with with the GAMSAT. So I applied to all the courses that I applied to didn't have any specifications about A levels. It was just all based on the GAMSAT because I only I only applied to GAMSAT uh, to GAMSAT unis. And I think that if you're applying for, to a uni that's doing like the UK CAT or something like that. Um, then sometimes they do have a specific requirement for, um, you know, maybe A, B, B in, in A levels or something like that. Well, I got a degree because obviously I'm a graduate, so th this um, channel is predominantly about graduate entry medicine rather than traditional because there's loads and loads of information on that. You have to assess what uh, qualification you've got, so whether you had, you know, a 2 1 or a first or a third or a 2 2, for example. And so I got a 2-2 unfortunately, <laughs> and if you're wondering why I got a 2-2, uh, it's because honestly I didn't work hard enough at my degree. I wasn't passionate about it and there's a, definitely a massive difference between my work ethic now. I absolutely love me medicine and I'm really really passionate about it, whereas my first degree, which was experimental psychology, wasn't really the career I was hoping for and I just kind of messed around. And also, I, I was quite young at the time, so yeah, anyway, so putting that aside, so I got a 2 2. So straight away, I could rule out certain medical schools that would not take a 2 2 candidate, regardless of A levels, uh, anything else. They just, you can't apply to certain medical schools if you've got a 2 2. I, I, I emailed loads of them where they, they said strictly a 2 1. So I ruled those out, and I didn't leave much, let's just say that. my words of wisdom to people who are currently studying for the degrees and want to do graduate entry medicine in the end just work for that 2-1 it will make things so much easier in the long run really it will in my case all the universities that uh, accepted a 2-2 candidates they required the GAMSAT the graduate Australian medicine admis admissions test and it's really unbelievably hard really really hard exam I had to take it twice because I didn't quite prepare well enough the first time and took it again so got in the second time round you you really need to do your research about what each of the medical schools that you are actually eligible for uh, require in terms of a test because pretty much all of them require some kind of a test before you get onto interview I, I can do a separate video on, on my gown sat technique if people want that to be honest, I didn't really get, oh, I suppose I did get quite a bit of experience. Basically, I worked in the NHS. I worked for NHS Direct. It, I believe it no longer exists now. I believe that it's been taken over by 111. But yeah, I, I worked um, not in a frontline capacity. I worked as an, basically an administrator. So I was a PA, an executive assistant, worked with um, like the chief exec and a few other sort of directors. And then I also did some sort of project management. I was a bid 
coordinator so it was a similar sort of thing so it was very much sort of office type work but in the NHS so and it was very very different to everybody else's experience I also I, w I was in St John Ambulance for two years I did a two-day placement in a hospital it's very very hard I know to get a placement it was only because I knew a doctor who was in um, where I worked in the NHS direct he was one of the directors so he very kindly let me go on a, a hospital placement with him but if I didn't know him then I probably would never have got anywhere with that and I don't think it really mattered that much it was only two days and I think that my experience in the NHS even though it wasn't necessarily on the front line was not more important I also worked as a call handler for NHS direct as well sort of part-time I did that a few times so I actually got to speak to patients and um, if you ever called NHS direct you basically just call up and um, if you've got a problem and you explain to the person about your symptoms so I would be the the call handler person who who answered your queries and went through the questions but yeah I suppose I did have quite a lot of work experience but not necessarily the usual the usual sort of school leavers type stuff you know like Duke of Edinburgh and things like that so it was, it was I think they were impressed with it because it was just different and interesting so try and do that if you can um get something a little bit different on top of the the usual sort of hospital placements and things like that because it just adds so much diversity to your to your um I say CV your application oh yeah I also had um I got some project management qualifications as well uh, prints too uh, which also helps in terms of like sort of hobbies things not really related to medicine and such I was in the opening and closing ceremonies of the Olympics so I was one of the drummers and I was an athlete marshal that again was like a really huge thing and I did that while I was doing the gamsat the second time so I, I can't believe I actually got in because I was just that year was just in absolutely insane I was just always doing something never had any time for myself but I managed to do it and I think that really really impressed them so so yeah, then I was invited to interview. I was only invited to one interview, and obviously that was the one that I got into. I read a really, really great book called Medical School Interviews, now second edition. And um, it had over 150 qu questions analysed, includes multiple mini interviews. That's another type of interview you can go to. A practical guide to help you get that place at medical school. And I'll put a link to that at the bottom of this video. This book was amazing. I mean... I read the whole thing and made notes and just sort of thought about what I would say. I didn't over prepare and I think that's the main thing um, that I've heard from also tutors who have been on interview panels have said to me that candidates who tend to over prepare and it's really obvious that they have just basically memorised answers like the best kind of answer tend to do a lot worse than people who really really think about you know what the, the, the interview panel was asking and uh, come up with a good answer um, just on the spot really because if you're if you're going to be a doctor you can't just memorize everything i mean i know there is quite a lot of that stuff but yeah you have to be able to think logically and um come up with a with a good argument show that you've really thought about the the pros and cons of a particular argument um my my school was very much um they gave you ethical sort of like ethical clinical scenarios and you had to to, to work your way through how you would respond to it so it wasn't just testing um sort of your logical ability it was more sort of you know your empathy very important and just how you deal with situations really and and how you are as a person i know that people will say this and people were thinking i was bullshit but you really do need to be yourself because if you're not right for the medical school then you're gonna have a shit time if you're not yourself so that's that's the only way they can tell how you're gonna get on at the medical school is if, you, if you're yourself um you might do better in another kind of medical school get an offer there instead so I will do a separate video I think on my GAMSAT technique because I think it's just too much to go into at this point and I'll also do a separate video on uh, sort of generally applying for medical school how you rule out things because this is just my story of how I got into medical school because it can be a bit of a minefield especially for graduates there isn't as much information out there for us it's mostly for the school leaver it's very different for me because as I, I said before I'm a 2-2 candidate so if you've got a 2-1 you'll find it a lot more easy to get in really in general and also to get on a graduate entry medicine program rather than a five-year course i can go through that as well because i did apply for those as well i was just there's no way i was gonna get in because yeah there are a lot more better candidates than me unfortunately it seems but yeah pretty much that's my story i hope that will be helpful to you all the best everyone